Welcome back to another Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we are on day three of learning Fusion 360 for 3D printing. And in today's tutorial, we are going to learn exactly how to make this 3D printable grocery bag holder for your home office or for wherever you want to take this. So with that said, let's jump into Fusion and get started. So by now you should have opened up a blank new canvas within Fusion 360. Now at this point I do want to note that as we move along within this series these designs will progressively get a little bit harder and a little bit more challenging but do note that I would do try my best to make these tutorials as clear and as accurate as possible in order to make sure that you guys can get some value from learning this program and that you can actually get some 3D prints out of this as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with part three of this tutorial. The first thing we need to do here is to create a new component for our design by hovering over to create new component. And what we want to do now is name this component to grocery bag holder. After you type that in, press OK. From here, what we essentially did is set up a component for our design, more or less just to organize exactly where its placement is in the browser. From here, let's go ahead and create a sketch, selecting this bottom plane down in the center. And now we should be at a top-down view of our design here. Let's go ahead and create a sketch by hovering over to create, select rectangle, and hover over to center rectangle. From here, by toggling the origin, drag out your square. And before you click on your mouse, I do want to also know is that you can see that there is two boxes that's shown on screen, the one on the left and the one on the right. If you were to press tab on your keyboard, you can see that you can hover between the two and you can change the numeric values between these two. So for example, the one that we are hovered over right now is highlighted in blue and this represents the height of the square. Let's go ahead and set the height to 25 millimeters and let's go ahead and set the width to 100 millimeters. After that's done, press enter. At this point, since we dimension off those two sides, our square is completely constrained. It can't move, it won't move, and nothing we can do will ever change that. Additionally, it could move if we deleted any of these features or if we turned off any of the parallel features shown here or if we deleted, deleted any of these uh, values here. But for now, don't you don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead and move forward with creating our design. So at this point, what we need to do here is to create four circles and those four circles is what is going to allow us to create the basically the top portion where we can actually fit our fingers right through this handle. So let me show you exactly what I'm referring to. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and hover over to center diameter circle. And then along this line within our rectangle, what we want to do is click along the line, drag it out and type in 20 millimeters for our first circle. From here, let's go ahead and create another circle by hovering over to center diameter circle, dra dragging this out, typing in 20, and clicking once more. From here, let's go ahead and create two more. And now we've created four circles. Now at this point, these circles are not dimensioned off yet. So what we need to do here is set these circles um, with the right dimensions in order to make this design a bit easier to make. So from the very first circle, if we press D on our keyboard, select the center of the circle all the way to the very edge of our rectangle, we can go ahead and set this dimension to 15 millimeters. Let's go ahead and set dimensions from our, this center circle here to this first circle and type in 20, pressing enter. From here to here, this will also be 20. And from the last, center, last circle to this center circle there, 20. Now we essentially should have what looks like a basically like a car with four wheels or an odd looking car with four wheels. Now that we have this and everything checks out, let's go ahead and finish sketch. And now we are set to turn this profile into a 3D body. By pressing E on your keyboard, select this profile and then type 15 millimeters within our design option menu. After that's done, press OK. Now, if we were to reorient our design from this top down view here, you can see that this is the slot where we fit our fingers to hold our groceries or our bags. But if you also notice is that these edges, they are quite sharp. Additionally, if you try to 3D print this, there may be some issues. So we also want what we also want to do is to round out these corners here using a feature within Fusion 360 called Fillet. So by pressing F on your, on your keyboard, 
what we want to do now is to fill it these three inner edges here and as well as this latch edge here so by selecting these edges here now what we can do here is by moving this arrow inward we can actively or we can see that now our design is kind of rounding itself out making it a little bit easier for it to hold when we do actually hold this i would set the dimension for the fillet to 1.5 millimeters and let's go ahead and create another fillet for this design. So, ho so hovering over to the right hand side where our dialog box has popped up, there's a little icon here which allows us to create another fillet without having to create a fillet within the feature menu shown down here below after we create this one. So for example, since we have four created at a 1.5 radius, let's go ahead and create a new selection set. And now we can create another selection set of fillets and these could actually be a different value compared to the ones that we have here. So let's go ahead and select these outer edges here. And let's set this fillet radius to 7.5 millimeters. After that's done, you should have these four inner edges here set to 1.5 and these three outer edges set to 7.5 millimeters. After that's done, press OK. Now we have a basic overview of our design here. We basically have the top piece for our handle. So now the very next thing we need to do here is to create the bottom portion of our design. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and create a new sketch, select the top face here. And now what we wanna do here is create a total of four lines. Now I'll do my very best to provide the values and the degrees for these de designs or for these lines. So do your best to follow along for this as well. So by pressing L on your keyboard, let's go ahead and select the edge of this bottom right hand side, bringing this out. And as you can see here, we have a total of two values. We have the left hand side, which is showing the value in degrees, and we have the right hand side showing the value in millimeters. And since this line is at an angle, we're going to have the, the left hand value shown in units of degrees. So from here, let's go ahead and set the first value or the length of this to 30, selecting tab, setting this to 60. Let's go ahead and click on our key on our mouse, dragging out and creating another line. Let's set the second line to 40 millimeters and setting the degree angle to 128 degrees, creating another line, setting this to 33 at 152, and then the last one at 132 degrees. Now the very next thing we need to do before you close off or before you exit off um, sketching this design, what we need to do now is finish off this design here by closing or creating three more lines, which essentially is going to close off our entire profile here. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and sketch out this next line, which is going to be all the way at 35 degrees or excuse me, 35 millimeters. Now, don't worry about the degree value as of right now. Let's go ahead and extend the second line, which is going to be at 35 as well. And let's go ahead and extend the last one, which is going to be at 18. And you're going to want to close this off by selecting the edge of this design here. From here, now we have basically the general outline of our profile here. Now, I know there's a lot going on. Now, don't worry about it. You can actually press escape on your keyboard to exit that. And then what we want to do here, you can actually drag out these values that we can get a better look at what we're working with here, since we actually don't need to worry about this too much. From here, since what we want to focus on is making sure that the bags that we basically are going to be putting in into this grocery bag holder, there's essentially going to practically move towards the center. That way the weight is distributed towards the middle and that nothing falls out when we're actually moving stuff. Um, one feature within Fusion 360 that we can utilize is using the parallel feature as shown at the top middle section of our screen. If we select this option, we can go ahead and select two lines and set them parallel to each other. As you can see, these two are actually parallel. Let's go ahead and set these two parallel as well. And these two, these are actually parallel. So meaning that these lines are basically just parallel to each other. And if your lines aren't parallel, you can go ahead and use that feature to just make it a little bit more nice and neat. After that's done, go ahead and finish sketch. And now we have the basic or general overview of our design here. Now you could tweak some settings or tweak some parts here to make it a little bit nicer and neater but as of right now you don't need to worry about that as we're going to add some features to make this a little less sharp so from here let's go ahead and press e on our keyboard 
selecting this profile we just created, selecting the extent type to two object, and let's go ahead and revolve ourselves around the design to select the other side here. After that's done, press OK. Now if we home this, we pretty much have the general overview of our design and basically be done, but we still want to go the extra mile and make this a little bit neater. So what we need to do now is to create a fillet for our design in order to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So by pressing F on our keyboard, let's go ahead and create a fillet for these edges on the outside. So we can select this fillet, this edge here, this edge, this edge, this edge, and let's go ahead and select all the hard edges of our design here. That way we can create a fillet for our design. And let's type in a fillet of three millimeters and let's see what that yields us. Now our corners have kind of rounded out a little bit. It looks a little bit nicer and neater. Additionally, if you wanted to make this a little bit longer, you also could. Just keep in mind, the farther you go, the more likely it's going to have some issues. So I will just probably leave this at three millimeters for now. After that's done, press OK. From here, let's also create a little hole or a gap down in the center. Now, in order to do that, we can press O on our keyboard, and this allows us to create an offset on our design. So if we select this top face here after pressing O, now we are taken back within the sketch environment and we can create an offset off our existing face. So if we select this top face here or this top edge here, toggling that, we can drag this inward to about negative three millimeters. And now we have basically what is an offset of our design here. From here, if we select this face we just created or this profile, pressing E, now we can type in negative three millimeters as our distance, setting the operation to cut and press OK. Now we have what is our final design for this 3D printable grocery bag holder. Additionally, if you wanted to send this off to print, let's go ahead and open this up within our slicer. And from here, you should see that we have our grocery bag holder as shown here. Additionally, one additional feature that I forgot to add here is that we could also add fillets for this design here at the very top. So if you wanted to, of course, you don't have to since we're pretty much done. You can press F on your keyboard, selecting this outer edge here, which is this outer line. And you can go ahead and just kind of create a fillet here so you can round this out if you want to. And this probably should make it a little bit easier for us to hold when it comes to um, actually using this design. So I fillet this inward to about three millimeters pressing OK. Let's go ahead and extrude or save this to our slicer and let's see what's the difference. And now we have our design completely made within Fusion 360 and ready to be 3D printed. Additionally, since we did create a fillet for this top piece here, you'll see kind of like the layers appearing um, in, a, in a slope. And if you wanted to get rid of this, you can also reduce the layer height, just say to 0.12 millimeters. And now these layers are practically disappearing. We can go even one step further to 0.08 millimeters with a 0.4 nozzle. And now these layers are practically gone, giving it a nice smooth finish on our design. But of course, this will take about one hour to print compared to our 30 minute print that we had earlier. So let's take a look. And there you go. And that's how you create this 3D printable grocery bag holder. So that pretty much wraps up today's tutorial. Let me know you guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section as well. As well as if you guys haven't already, make sure to join the 3D printing community down below in the description. We have over 200 members and we release all the tutorials and guides and as well as STLs to this project down below within that community. So if you guys wanna get access to those resources and as well as for the STL files that we create for these videos, there'll be a link down below where you guys can get access to it as well. So with that said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to thumbs it up, to subscribe to the channel. And with that said, this is Brandon signing out. See you guys in the next one. Peace.